Now, many of you may have heard from the supporters of the Big Bang that I have a conflict of interest. They say I have a conflict of interest because I'm doing work in fusion energy. And I do make the claim that our research in fusion energy and the plasma physics of fusion devices is related to what we can learn from the cosmos about plasmas. And what we learn in the laboratory about plasmas can relate to what we understand about the cosmos. And especially since I am raising money for our fusion research as well as for the cosmology research, somehow this creates a conflict of interest. But that absolutely misunderstands the whole process of development of science and technology. That link between pure science, applied science, and the development of technology is exactly what pushes science forward. What is the real proof of Maxwell's equations? Well, you prove that every time you turn on a light, because that light goes on only because electricity is being supplied to your house based on Maxwell's equations. What's the validity of quantum mechanics? Well, you prove the validity of quantum mechanics every time you turn on a computer because computers are based on semiconductors and semiconductors are designed on the principles of quantum mechanics. This link between science and technology is fundamental to not only how technology advances, to not only how science is verified, but it's also the key to the advancement of science itself. Because it's only as new technologies are applied, for example, the amazing technologies that have gone into the working of the JWST, millions of kilometers away from Earth. That is what makes new scientific advances possible. There is a conflict of interest involved in this story, and it does involve funding, but it's on their side. To get to that, I have to first put aside something that has been claimed. People on the other side of this debate have claimed that I'm slandering scientists to say that they would be upset if their theories are proven wrong by this data. People in the, some of these videos have said, oh no, cosmologists would be excited if their theories are proven wrong. This would mean new physics. This is what makes our work exciting. Well, to put that politely, that's a load of hooey. Now, I learned as a child that in general, you should not make blanket generalizations about human beings. It can be dangerous. It can lead to stereotyping. But there are exceptions. And I'll go out on a limb and say all cosmologists, not only all cosmologists, but all astrophysicists, all scientists, without exception, are people. You won't find a single robot or extraterrestrial or angel with wings among them. And people don't like to be proven wrong. I mean, dear viewer, do you like to be proven wrong? Especially if this was work that you've done your entire career, destroyed? I didn't think so. And if you don't want to be proven wrong, neither do scientists. Now that's perfectly okay, and that's perfectly natural, and that affects all of science. The problem in the conflict of interest is that in cosmology, the funding of the field has been concentrated in the hands of a few government committees. Government can do a great job of funding science in some cases. It was a purely government-led project 
governments of many countries that led to the successful creation of the JWST space instrument. But if you concentrate funding in only a few hands, then you have to be very careful about conflict of interest. And the situation is that the committees that allocate the funding for cosmology, both in the United States, where we have NSF and NASA, and in other countries, are totally dominated by scientists who have made their careers by developing and advocating the Big Bang hypothesis. So then that creates a tremendous conflict of interest because they don't fund people who are trying to destroy their theory. And it is well known within cosmology, and I have had many people tell me this firsthand, that if you openly and publicly shed doubt on the, the validity of the Big Bang hypothesis, on the validity of the expansion of the universe, you will not get funded for your research. Not for that research and not for future research. And this is just like in the Emperor's New Clothes. If you don't see the Big Bang clothes, then you're stupid and unfit for your job, and you won't be able to carry on your career. So this creates an un extremely unhealthy climate of fear in cosmology, in which people are afraid of confronting the Big Bang hypothesis. It is perfectly OK to list at great length everything that's wrong with the Big Bang hypothesis. Nobody's going to object to that. But if you conclude not that the Big Bang has to be tweaked, but that the Big Bang hypothesis is wrong, you won't be published and you'll be cut off from funding. That's what has to change. Now, how can I say the Big Bang never happened? Is it because I'm much braver than these other scientists? No, I don't think that's the case. My funding doesn't come from these committees. My funding comes from LPP Fusion. 90% of my research time is spent directly on Fusion. But it's justified to allocate about 10% of our, my time to cosmology because it is, in fact, the formulas derived from my earlier work in cosmology that is the basis of much of our design of the dense plasma focused device here on Earth. And much of our effort in developing fusion comes from comparing our results with astrophysics at the solar system level, astrophysics of the sun, astrophysics of quasars. And where does LPP fusion's money come from? Well, at the moment, LPP fusion's money comes from some of you. We're from public, uh, fun, we are funded by the general public. Now, in legal terms, we're not a public corporation. We can't trade, trade our shares freely, but we are funded by the public. And that's why I know my funding won't be cut off if I can convince members of the public that our research is well-founded. And in fact, I've heard many people tell me that because our predictions have been verified repeatedly in the scale of cosmology, that gives them more confidence that our predictions about fusion energy will eventually be uh, verified as well. Now, of course, the ultimate verification of what we're saying about cosmology is going to be proved by our success in applying that plasma knowledge to fusion energy. And that complete success hasn't happened yet. But the way it can happen is by enlarging those sources of funding. 
And that's why we are completely unembarrassed to ask you for more funding. Eventually, we hope that such funding will be able to lead to independent institutes applying the scientific method to non-Big Bang cosmology so that not only me, but many other researchers will be able to do this research in freedom from fear that their funding will be cut off. So that's what I wanted to say in this episode. Uh, in the middle of the month, I'll be debating in person about the Big Bang in London at the uh, How the Light Gets In Festival, and I hope some of you can join me there in person. If you can't, please refer to the references in the description where you can see where these debates will eventually be posted online, and also look to the description if you want to help fund the research. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.